Two eight five one, turn right heading one eight zero. One four Papa, turn right two four five. Report localizer established. Boom Technologies. They are an American startup company which is currently designing a relatively fast supersonic transporter which will be capable of flying at Mach 2.2. That is 1,300 knots or 2,300 kilometers per hour. In comparison to today's jets, this is a drastic change. It's been now 10 months since I covered what the Boom Supersonic Jet was, and I wanted to discuss in this video all the latest developments and essentially everything we know about this up-and-coming supersonic jet. A big thanks to JP who suggested this video. I do really appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about Boom on a whole before we get into the various subsections that I want to include in this video. Boom want this supersonic aircraft to be introduced by 2023. In my eyes, this is a stretch and if we do see it at all, I don't see it being released for many, many more years after that. Potentially even stretching over a decade. I could be proved wrong and I'd be very excited if I was. Boom planned for this aircraft to seat very simply 55 passengers, and airlines offering seats on board the aircraft would typically charge the same price as a business class fare. However, that is going to change. It's been quoted at around $2,000, for instance, from London to US one way, and then roughly $5,000 return, so I would say it's a bit over $2,000 one way, but that's just the price they were quoting at. We all know that you could also fly London to New York in three and a half hours, according to Boom. This is a massive improvement on current flight times found with regular operators like your 787s, 747s, 777s, A350s, and more alike. Moving along, how will this testing actually take place? This will be achieved through the XB-1 Demonstrator, a smaller version of the real deal transporter set for eventual release. The aircraft is nicknamed the Baby Boom according to most within Boom Technologies and had a slated date of first flight for the end of 2017. This was later pushed back to the end of this year, but during the 2018 Farnborough Air Show, Boom did publicly announce that it would be indeed another year before we saw the very first flight of the XB-1 Demonstrator. These further delays have given me that opinion that it will be some time before we see this Boom supersonic aircraft flying with airlines, especially as Boom want the first one up by 2023, I do believe that is quite a stretch. So what airlines are truly interested in it? Let's move on to the market demand where I will discuss all things demand, including those airlines interested and also the airlines with options. We begin this in-depth look at the market sector, discussing the routes possible and where the demand for the aircraft will likely come from. At this point in time, Boom believes that the aircraft has the potential of selling over 2,000 units. This would occur over the next 10 years. However, I don't believe this will be the case. Again, this isn't necessarily me being negative. However, I like to be a realist and I cannot truly see over 1,000 units being sold in that time frame. Again, I could be wrong though. This aircraft also has the possibility of flying to around 500 daily routes according to Boom. For instance, that New York to London service and others alike. It would also cut the time of Trans-Tasman services easily by half, making commuting between the two countries like a car ride into your local city. Potentially, this would reshape the way we worked. For instance, you could have a 3pm business meeting in Auckland and be back home in Australia for dinner with your family. With the hefty price tag though, this would likely be only accessible to those who flew regularly in business class, or as others say, the elite. Boom though have gone against the idea of this being an elite aircraft for those with elite standards, and I do praise them for this. Boom want to provide an aircraft to the public that despite its hefty price tag is actually accessible to the majority of the public. Rather than offering a $10,000 ticket, which they could easily do, Boom is attempting to price the tickets reasonably. And while it is expensive, I can definitely see the benefits to it. For instance, you're getting a business class seat for the normal business class price, but you are getting to your destination far quicker, which in turn probably makes it a little bit worth it. On top of that, you are getting the experience of going on a supersonic jet. Moving on to the interest in the aircraft though, Japan Airlines and Virgin Atlantic are the two carriers which have been named and have notable interest. Richard Branson did note that Virgin Atlantic had options for 10 of the aircraft in 2016, and last year, around the end of 2017 of course, Japan Airlines, the other named carrier, did confirm that they had pre-ordered up to 20 of the jets. However, on top of this, a European carrier has 15 options, and in addition to that, 51 commitments were added during the 2018 Paris Air Show, 
Again, this was just unnamed, so it's pretty much speculation from this point forward until we hear more. So, for an aircraft which we really don't know a lot about, it's got a promising introduction planned if all goes according to plan. A lot of people I know have been curious about the engines and how they would work, and it's something I'm yet to dive into in any of my previous videos on the Boom supersonic jet. Basically, Boom wants to use moderate bypass fans without the afterburners. Now, engines aren't my specialty, so I'm going to be trying my best to get all the terminology right, but also keep it very simple for those that may still be learning things about the industry. Boom Technologies has continued over the past few months to narrow down a candidate for the engine, and this in turn has contributed to the hefty delays faced in getting the very first demonstrator up in the skies. A key problem with the engine manufacturer that Boom wished to go with is that manufacturers like General Electric, Rolls-Royce, CFM International and more won't build or at the very least inject millions into developing this sort of engine, with Boom only having a handful of pre-orders or at the very least options. They need the assurance that this plane will sell well and this makes obtaining the engine rather difficult. Because of this extremely complicated design, the cost to repair the engine and also perform regular maintenance will be extremely high. This is another concern for engine manufacturers as they need to make sure that Boom will actually be able to pay these fees. Interestingly enough, there are quite a lot of different supersonic jets being worked on as we speak. Potentially, could this spark a new generation of air travel that's headed our way? More importantly, will it succeed in getting in the skies? This is one of the biggest questions surrounding the Boom supersonic aircraft, and I'd be really interested to hear your take on it in the comments section below. I'd like to thank you very much for your continued support, and I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. Race all of these broken dreams and flight And we'll fly